In this video, I'm going to present all of the things that you need to know to be successful at an FDM interview. And we're going to look at how you can ace an FDM interview. And I strongly recommend that you watch the video all the way through because by the end of it, you'll have seen the most common questions and you'll have strategies and ways of answering all of the questions that are likely to come up. So let's look at the things that you need to ensure that you do to be successful. So make sure that you know your program, have notes about it, know the length, know exactly what training you've got to do and the commitment that the FDM program entails. They do ask about that and you need to be aware of the fact that if you drop out or if you can't commit to it, it could cause problems. So make sure that this is definitely the right program for you. You have to also make sure that you know what FDM actually do. And my top tip that makes it so much easier to understand the business is just spend 10, 15 minutes reading through their annual report. If you just Google FDM, you'll be able to find that very easily. And it just details what the company does, what clients are working with, and it tells you all about the FDM group. And it's a good idea in your interview to say, I was reading your annual report and I found this, this, and this. And it's just a great thing to mention and it helps you stand out. Make sure that all of your tech is working. If you've got one of the video interviews, do check that your cameras and everything are ready to go and that it's working effectively, test your microphone, because if that goes wrong, that also causes problems. You need to know the key questions that FDM frequently ask, and I will show you the most common questions. And you need to have strong and well-planned answers ready. So a good idea is to actually practice writing some answers, bullet point key points that you're gonna mention. And by the end of this video, if you're working along with it, you will have a really great plan for your FDM interview. So let's look at a question they always like to ask, which is how do you keep up with developments in technology? And people often talk about really boring and obvious things. They say that they read a little bit and that they watch something on the news and they read newspapers and websites. And it, yes, these things do help you keep up with technology, but they're not really particularly impressive as answers. Let's look at some things that will actually make your answer so much stronger and some good things to mention that elevate your answer beyond the level that I've just talked about. So I talk about industry publications, naming them, showing off some knowledge, CPD that you can do. So that's continuing professional development that you can do now and that you can commit to doing in future to continuously improve. And then what we call learned societies, which are a really great thing to be involved with. So industry publications, a good idea is think about which specific program you are applying to and look up what are the publications that are in that specific niche. So if you're looking at cybersecurity, for example, what are the go-to industry publications that are really specialized and that are read by people in that industry? A great idea is to pick that particular publication and read it. If you've still got access to university libraries, this is a way that you can get some access to some really, really potentially expensive content through a university library and your librarians would be able to help you with that. And a great idea is just to pick out three articles from that publication that you thought were interesting because another question that they may ask in the interview is tell me about something that you've read or tell me about developments in the industry. So rather than asking how do you keep up with it, they can ask for examples. And if you've got those ready because you've read it, you can impress them with your industry publications knowledge, you can impress them with your reading, and you can impress them with something really interesting. CPD, great thing to do is courses, things like edX, you can take some courses, and that's one way that you can keep up to date with technology. So as new courses are being launched, they are usually very cutting edge. There are webinars that are offered by companies and by various societies, often free. You can join those and you can listen and get presentations about new developments and also talk about building your professional network, that you follow people on Twitter, you follow people on LinkedIn, you know who the large influencers and people that have great expertise in your particular area and that you follow them and you read what they are producing and that's one way to keep you up to date and then you have these societies things like the royal institution um, offers online lectures and in-person lectures some of which do tackle technology and computing related 
topics. And then there's the British Computer Society, for example, that you can get membership of or get involved with what they do. Then you can talk about how you've joined these societies or that you've taken part in something and that you know what they offer and that that is one way in which you can keep up to date with developments. And then if you do participate in any of this, do just have an example. So say I use my membership of these societies to keep up to date. For example, I recently attended or I recently learned about and that just gives a bit more color to your answer. Another great thing to do to be well prepared is to list three issues that are facing the IT industry. You might think about things like AI, recruitment of good staff, or changing working patterns has been a theme post-pandemic, for example. Have a list of three issues that are facing the IT industry, three uh, new technologies, developments, things that are going to have a big impact so you can be ready for any questions around that sort of angle. So what we're doing in this video is really looking at how you can answer specific questions, but if they're asked slightly differently, we can broaden things so that you're ready for any potential variation on this. And if you are doing the preparation, like I'm suggesting, it will make a massive difference to your interview. The next one, which they quite like, and it's really important in a consulting role or in an IT role to be able to do this, which is how do you manage high workload and meet tough deadlines? So in your role as an FDM consultant or working on a placement, you will be presented with lots and lots of work to do and potentially very, very tough deadlines. And what you're doing is feeding into something else. So if you're behind, then someone else is going to end up behind and have a knock-on effect. So they're really interested to know about this. So here is how you answer it. The first thing is just get some good values in there. Explain that I am a highly productive, focused employee and I've got a strong work ethic. So one way that I manage a high workload is I do actually work very hard. I get a lot done. That's one good way, but it's not enough to answer the question. The next step is to say that I prioritize effectively. And a really simple thing to do is just learn about the Eisenhower matrix and you can simply explain how that matrix works. Effectively, it's just looking at um, what's important, what's urgent, and doing the really important, really urgent things straight away, delegating things that can be delegated, and then planning what you're going to do in future at the same time, and then also looking at things that are not important and are not urgent at all and just saying that those are not what I'm going to be doing right now. You can also talk about using short, medium, and long-term planning. So I know exactly what needs to be done immediately. I know what I need to be doing in the next few days. So I know that I need to make this much progress on this thing in order to work towards that final deadline and that you also use long-term planning and you're continually looking back, where am I and where do I need to be? So you've got three different planning systems. You also should mention that you anticipate pinch points. So there are certain times where your workload may be a lot higher or you may have lots of deadlines all at once and you need to know exactly where those are and get things out of the way or get things moved in order to ensure that you are working to the correct schedule and that you've planned in advance. You're not gonna have just periods of quiet where you're not doing it as much and then periods where things are just all happening at once and you can't handle it. That you're trying to spread things out as much as possible to ensure that all the deadlines are met and that you're always on top of your work. And then lastly, you say, I clearly communicate and collaborate when needed. So if you are struggling with very high workloads or that when you've planned it out, that it's gonna be incredibly difficult to meet the tough deadlines, even with a very, very strong work ethic, even with all the prioritization, you still communicate with people so you can understand this is where I am, this is what needs to be done, this is an appropriate uh, time frame, and you've got all of that communication because it's much valued by management knowing where you are and where you're going rather than getting there and not having what they expect done and having all those knock-on effects. So communication is really important. A great tip as well is have an example ready. They do like to ask questions around, tell me about a time that you had to manage a tough 
deadline or you that you had really high workload those are common tell me about a time questions and having an example ready is a good idea if they ask this question directly you can explain all of this and then you can start going into an example to add color to your answer the next question is incredibly important which is why do you want to train with fdm or they may ask why do you want to join fdm or what attracted you to this program or why is this program the right fit for you or what made you want to apply here they can ask this in loads and loads of different ways but this sort of question comes up all the time and let's look at what you need to do so think about what is your goal and how does fdm get there so what do you actually want to do long term what's your ambition how is this the right program for that think about your academic and your personal interests Think about any work experience or previous experience that you've got through your university or through your previous careers. Think about your ambitions and what you want to develop and be enthusiastic. Be really, really, really positive about this and that's going to help. So let's look at some things that you can mention. So not everything on this list is going to match up perfectly with you, but what I can do is I can give you a big long list of loads of things that you can mention and I would take down and build in as many of these as possible to start creating your answer. So FDM offer ongoing coaching and support, which is a great thing about their program, that they are accredited, that they have accreditations. I would look at what their current accreditations are, and that's a badge that says this is quality, it is respected by employers, and that is something that I'm looking to pursue. You can talk about the industry gold digital credentials that FDM like to brag about, and that's something that you're really interested in. You may talk about the fact that you know previous FDM consultants that have worked with them, trained with them, and you know what they have achieved through it. And you spoke to people who have been on the program and they told you these very positive things, only share the positives, and that that influenced your decision, that you've really done a lot of research, and that can also be impressive. Talk about the attractions of the partners. So think about the companies that FDM work with and place trainees with uh, things like JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, all these sort of really prestigious employers and that that might match up with your long-term ambitions. You talk about being a perfect match for your interests, that there's lots of development potential. So you could be looking at getting some accreditations, that you can talk about the quality of their training, that is an attraction as well that you want a job that involves a lot of problem solving and that's something that you've done in the past and you want a job in which you can use your creativity and you see that roles at FDM are going to offer you that opportunity and finally you can talk about the need to develop expertise that you want to become a expert in something and be the go-to person and by completing the training program at FDM, that's going to set you on a path to becoming a real expert that can add a lot of value. And a top tip is make sure you really know the program and you've thought about where you want to go with it. And a good idea is also watch some interviews with past participants where they actually will say in their interview, I joined because when I did this program, this is what I achieved. And you can basically take some of the things that they mention as their achievements and some of their motivations and build that into your answer. The next question, which is really important, is would you be willing to relocate? And this one you've got to be careful about. And you always have to think, why are they asking the questions that they're asking? And as a warning, they may have something in mind that if they're asking it, it may be that they're asking everybody, or it may be that they're thinking that for this particular group of people that we're interviewing, we are thinking about this particular client that has told us that they need all of these people and that may happen to be a relocation, perhaps internationally. So this question may actually be quite important. And there's three ways to answer it, and it depends on your ability to relocate. So the first option is if you're super open-minded and it's absolutely fine, it's just to say yes and be very, very clear on it. Have no reservations because if they need someone that's relocating, they don't want to offer the job to someone who then decides, actually, I'd really not like to relocate. They want to be sure that the answer is genuine. So you'd say then something to follow up. I'd be willing to relocate nationally or internationally to best match one of your clients. Be really clear about it. I'm absolutely fine with relocating. 
if you are kind of okay for relocating, but you have a preference, you can express that. It's not as strong an answer as just saying yes, because that just ticks all the boxes, but it's kind of a backup. So you'd be able to say, I'd be willing to relocate and then offer as much as possible. So you could say something like, my first preference would be here. So you're expressing a preference where I know FDM has several clients. So express a rational suggestion, but I'm happy to adapt to client needs. So you could relocate, but if possible, this would be perfect for you, but you're not going to turn anything down just because it's relocation. And the third option is you sometimes just have to be honest. If you are not willing to relocate and you will only work in a particular city, you don't want them making an offer to you that involves a mandatory obligation to relocate. So you're going to have to basically blow up your chance of getting the job if they have a specific relocation in mind because you aren't going to be able to take it anyway. So answer honestly. And if the answer is no, you're going to have to say no, but it may harm your chances of getting the role. But then offer as much as you can. So rather than saying, no, I can't relocate and then leaving it there, try and offer as much as possible so that you'd be willing to relocate within a certain area or that you'd be willing to relocate nationally but not internationally. If, for example, you're willing to relocate nationally but not internationally, don't say, I am not willing to relocate internationally unless you're specifically asked. Say, I'm happy to relocate within the UK, for example. So you're offering as much as you can. You're always trying to say yes, but saying as much of a yes as you can is really the best option if you are limited in your ability to relocate and you kind of have to say no. So that's how you get through that question. Throughout the interview, they will ask questions about, tell me about a time you did this, give me an example of when you experienced this. And this is always answered through the STAR technique. And FDM specifically in their training materials for interviews, recommend the use of this technique. And I'm gonna show you how it works. It's really very simple. So you've got situation, task, action, and result. None of this is complicated. Situation, when and where was it? And just set out the basics. So when did it happen? And explain the very basic details really quickly. Task is sometimes misunderstood. It's not just saying what you need to do. The focus needs to be on what was the goal that you needed to meet? What did you actually have to achieve? The action is explaining what you actually did to work towards that goal. And then for result, in almost every case, you want to be talking about the success that you enjoyed. So how you achieve the goal. Remember, they want to employ people that are successful, people that get things done, that get results for clients. So you always want to be focusing as much as possible on successful outcomes and demonstrating that the actions that you took led to that success, and you're giving examples of why you'd be a great hire. So let's look at dealing with one of these questions and how you think about planning them and the things that they're looking for and the things that you need to avoid. So tell me about a time you overcame a significant obstacle at work. So choose something that is significant, that it's actually a big deal. Then Talk about achieving an ambitious target. So if you're overcoming an obstacle, the obstacle has to be significant and you actually have to have achieved something. So you're always thinking about your best achievements. You want to talk about getting the best out of yourself so that you worked hard and you were successful. But more importantly is how did you help others to be successful? How did you work well with other people that led and contributed to the success? They'd like to hear those things. You want to demonstrate innovation adaptability, so something's went wrong, but you adapted to it rather than making the problem worse, and that you work together as a team. They don't like answers where you solved everything. It's got to show some sort of teamwork. But most importantly, and a good answer, is you actually met the objective. And it may be hard to think of an example straight away, but I'll give you a big list of things that you can think about, and that'll give you some inspiration as to what examples you might want to pick. Bad answers are things that are an easy fit, so for example the computers weren't working i turned it off and turned it on again and now they were working employ me i'm brilliant that's not going to work so anything that is an easy fix is not going to impress them on this question where you were the problem i have actually heard answers where people have answered this and you thought that actually you caused some of those problems and if you weren't there it probably would have been more successful that's not a really good answer. That There's no learning, that you need to be learning from it so that if you encounter this obstacle in future, you know how to deal with it and you want to show a confidence about that. Blaming someone else, 
is really negative because they'll think that's part of your values and you don't want that. The idea that it was all you and you did everything and without you, everything falls apart and you are some sort of superhero is not going to be popular. You've got to acknowledge the contributions of others and very, very clearly do that. And make sure you don't pick some example that it failed where there was an obstacle and you didn't fully overcome it. You want to show that this is a really big problem and we thought everything was going wrong initially, but we persevered. And by doing all these innovative things, we achieved success. And notice how I'm talking about we achieved success, not I was successful. You're talking about being successful together. Some examples are extreme deadlines where suddenly you get an extremely tight deadline that really, really challenges and pushes you. The IT disruptions, they're no one's particular fault probably, and they can be really disruptive and you have to find other ways of doing things that you needed to learn a new skill. You were assigned to something completely new and you had to learn very quickly that you were covering an absence. So for example, you should have had five people in the team, but you only had three, but you had the same thing to deliver, that you were acting up, that you had to take on a more senior role temporarily or where you have a really, really challenging technical problem. And you can talk about the technical difficulties that had to be overcome and how you solve those. And that can show a lot of innovation. And you can acknowledge that somebody solved this bit and that you recognize that this person in the team was particularly expert in this area. And you were able to use the various strengths of the different people you're working with to effectively overcome it as a team. And so definitely, definitely have an example ready for this. And I'll give you a list at the end of the video of other examples that you need to have ready and prepared for your interview. And when you go about answering this, you would use the star technique. So you would do all the normal things. So situation, explain what the obstacle is, when and where it happened. For the task, be really clear. This is what I was assigned to do. And to be successful, what we needed to do was... That's a really simple way. You've just explained what it is and what had to happen. Then the action, just very simply say, these were the problems. We were facing this problem, this problem, this problem, this problem. And then you just go through the list of problems and you say, and to overcome this, we did this. To overcome this, one of my colleagues was able to do this. To solve this part of the problem, this person did this and I did this. And you just basically match all of the issues to a corresponding solution. It's a really beautiful, nice, strong answer. And then the result is explain how it was successful, acknowledge some contributions from other people. And then a great thing to do to really show success is to say, as a result of overcoming this obstacle, this is what happened. This is how it affected other people. This is how it affected the wider organization. And that really emphasizes the success that you had. So that's how you deal with this sort of question. When we get to the end of the interview, they're going to ask some questions. So I'm going to tell you some questions that you could ask them at the end of the interview. And I'm also going to give you a list of some questions that I have seen when I've analyzed other FDM interviews that are asked very often. And you can have answers prepared and examples ready to go. So if those come up, you are really well prepared. So one question that you could ask is what have you found in your experience or the characteristics of the most successful FDM consultants? So find out what you should do to be successful and what they're really looking for. And then if you're quite brave, you can say, and therefore, what should I focus on for my professional development? And they might give you a little bit of feedback and a little idea of what's really important. And you can talk about making commitments to developing those areas and that you've now got a really good understanding of what you need to be successful and you can remind them of several parts of your answers that demonstrate what they are looking for. You could say, I'm very interested in the FDM networks. We've got staff networks. Could you tell me more about these? So look at the company, find some things about it, and then pick something that you could ask about that shows I've done lots of research. I know what I'm talking about. And then show deep interest in that. You could say, what would you suggest that a new starter at FDM do before starting to be well prepared for day one if successful? And you're asking both about what you should do before you start your training to be really well prepared and before you start a placement. And you're really making a commitment to being a good employee, to actually doing the best that you can. And if they make suggestions about you should prepare this, this, and this, you make a commitment to doing that. And that can be really positive. You could say, could you please detail the next steps in pr the process here at FDM, including what's the timeline? When do I find out? 
and do you get feedback? FDM usually provide feedback if you're successful or unsuccessful and make sure you're clear about the fact that you're interested in feedback regardless of the outcome. If you don't get the role, what is really useful is actually get some feedback and they will tell you what you're doing wrong. And you may find that you've said that in the last five interviews that you've had and maybe that was something that's costing you the roles and you can take that on board and will actually do better in your future interviews. So regardless of what happens, feedback is always valuable. And then to finish the interview, end positively, thank the interviewer and remind them that you are very interested and that this role is perfect for you. Things that you do not ever ask about. If you do, you can blow the whole interviews. Don't ask about time off. Don't ask about delaying start date, which you're basically saying, how much training can I miss? Or I'm going on holiday, I can't start my training. Give me a job and I'll miss part of the essentials. Don't ask about salary. You should research that yourself. And do not ask about what happens if you quit. That's really not the time to discuss dropping out before you've been actually given an offer. So absolutely avoid that. And to finish, here are some questions that I've seen previously reported. And I would have examples and answers ready for these because other people have reported them. And it's a great idea to have as many examples ready as possible. And you can practice using the techniques that I've shared with you. So I hope this video was helpful to you. Please like and subscribe and post in the comments what questions FDM asked in your interview. And finally, thank you very much for watching.